Good day class and today you now with our discussion with the National Building Code of the Philippines we will be uh, going to Rule 4. Now we're done with Rule 1, Rule 2 and Rule 3 of the Na Rule three of the National Building Code. So let's proceed to Rule 4. When we say Rule 4, there are types of construction. Section 301 is the types of construction as I said earlier. Type 1 is the wood construction. The structural elements Maybe any of the materials permitted by the code. So, any materials that will be presented on the code further, no, as you further read the National Building Code, it is uh, permitted. Also, in reference to the National Structure Code of the Philippines, you could see that you know, the wood or the timber materials that are uh, used in the Philippines, you know, as long as it is uh, permitted with the code. Next is the Type 2 construction, shall be wood construction with protective fire resistant materials and one are fire resistive throughout when we say fire resistive throughout that means the material will resist fire now in approximately one hour before it start to react or uh, you could see burn no on the material except that the non bearing which is a permanent partition may use fire retardant so when we say fire retardant that means uh, it's a chemical or a treatment that is uh, being applied to a wood or any material so that the reaction of that material to fire will be lessened wood within the framing assembly with a one hour resistivity so at least the one hour before the material it will react to the fire that's the type 2 or uh, wood construction with fire resistive or fire resistant materials now with one hour fire resistive throughout next for type 3 is shall be masonry and wood construction combined Su structural elements may be any of the materials permitted by the code so any materials that are permitted by the code provided that the building shall be one hour fire resistive throughout the same thing with type 2 uh, wood construction it should also have a one hour fire resistive throughout exterior walls shall be of the incombustible fire resistive construction so uh, the materials that being used uh, should be a uh, fire resistive construction as well specifically with the exterior walls exterior walls includes your walls you now the walls that facing the roads the the streets and the alleys and also with your fire walls so remember that it has to be a fire resistive construction no with the uh, with respect to your type 3 which is masonry and wood construction next type 4 shall be steel iron concrete or masonry construction and walls now ceiling and permanent partition shall be of incombustible fire resistive construction it's a combination of uh, all types no uh, steel iron co with concrete or masonry no or one of those no uh, except that the permanent non-bearing partition when we say non-bearing partition that means uh, it bears no most probably that is your exterior walls or the walls that uh, bear beams, columns uh, of one hour fire resistive construction may use fire retard retardant. So, as I said, no fire retardant it reduces the reaction time of the material to react with fire. Treated wood within the framing assembly. If you're going to use a treated wood, so it has to be of, uh, with fire retardant so that it will not easily react with fire. Because we all know in your engineering shop work or in your previous years that uh, wood react faster with fire than concrete and steel next type 5 now shall be 4 hour fire resistive throughout we say 4 hours longer than from type 1 to type 4 so because uh, type 2, 3 and 4 are 1 hour fire resistive throughout and the structural element shall be steel, iron, concrete or masonry construction the same no, but instead no, it has a greater amount of time before it reacts with fire next is section 402 changes in types now when we uh, change the type of construction of course the same thing with the change of occupancy last time we've discussed that in our part 2 or lecture 2 of the national building code uh, we we discussed that the you could change the occupancy of the material unless there's an approval of the building official the same thing with a change of type of construction you could change the type of the construction unless you applied for it the building official approves it and there are necessary papers or documents 
needed no so that the uh, building official could design uh, properly uh, that you were going to change the type of construction that you have uh, on the moment so unless otherwise you don't have any pertinent documents or necessary documents uh, you could not change the type of the construction of course that is prior to the or with the approval of the building official next is section 4 or 4 403 or requirements on types of construction what are the requirements on types of uh, construction number one fire resistive requirements what are those letter a exterior bearing and non-bearing walls of types two and three construction shall have one hour fire resistive rating so at least now they have a one hour fire resistive rating so that uh, the people inside now if ever there's a fire or there's an explosion uh, the people uh, could have at least a one hour uh, escape uh, time so that they will be safe while those of types 4 and 5 shall have 4 hour fire resisting resistive rating so the materials no the exterior, exterior bearing and non-bearing walls no so at least they have a 4 hour so greater than that that's okay and uh, these are the also in relation with the fire code of the Philippines. Next letter B, interior bearing walls. We say interior bearing walls that is inside your house, permanent partitions, floor, and groups of types 2, 3, and 4. Construction shall have one hour fire resistive rating. So at least one hour, you no, know, those interior walls, those ceilings, you no, know, those roofs, you no, know, I mean those uh floors, one hour. And those on top type 5 shall have three hour fire resistive rating so that uh, it it will not have uh, effect now with the people inside of course that is uh, based on the material we all know that the type 5 is a combination of steel masonry and wood no or concrete for bearing walls and one hour fire resistive rating for vertical openings floors and roofs so those are the requirements when it comes to fire no uh, and, uh, when it comes also to your uh, walls and roofs and floors no, with the permanent partitions next structural frames when we say structural frames those are the beams and the columns of types 2 and 3 construction shall have 1 hour fire resistive rating when we say 1 hour fire resistive rating at least 1 hour while those of type 4 shall have 2 hour no, fire resistive rating and those of type 5 shall have 3 hour fire resistive rating so that means no it's uh, when the type of the construction uh, is increases or increases number no so we all know that uh, type 5 combination of steel no with a 4 hour resistive rating in general so in short other uh, parts of the construction specifically the structural frames also have their fire resistive rating as well so next is the exterior walls and windows shall have one hour fire resistive rating for all types why because uh it will give uh the people inside no uh to escape no at least for one hour so that uh they could uh touch the windows or touch the walls or touch the doors no so th that they will not be in danger or they will be safe no when it comes to fire next is the interior walls and ceilings and finishes or ceiling finishes uh, finishes of interior walls and ceilings of any building shall be classified according to the flame spread characteristic using generally accepted engineering standards that is ASTM uh, standards later on I will uh, have you your uh, watch your uh, video regarding that that's what called the tunnel test now there's a chamber wherein the material will be tested like a tan in a tunnel type chamber so of course though the materials should pass the engineering standards it also comes with the strength with the moisture content and some of the characteristics of the materials in relation to the ASTM what is ASTM American uh, standards and testing of materials so that's the uh, rule of thumb no when it comes to your uh, ceilings and interior finishes next is requirement of for flame spread characteristics of finishes shall not apply to flames and trim of doors and windows when we say trim of doors and windows they are what the part of the window that we usually do not see uh, in particular no in general but 
you 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 see it no when you intention intentionally want to see those parts of the doors and windows and two materials which are less than one millimeter in thickness because uh, that's very minimal no cemented to the surface of the walls and ceiling so uh, those materials you cannot uh, see that no in particular but if you intentionally want to see those parts of the house or the construction or the building uh, you will see that that it's a uh, very uh, minimal no it's uh, the thickness uh, less than one millimeter so it's probably thinner than the thickness of the door usually the thickness of the door approximately uh, 10 centimeter no it here is one millimeter long so that means no you uh, there's an exemption no so so that is the uh, requirement number two Two or letter B. Now, when it comes to your interior finishes and ceiling, next is the materials required to be flame spread proof shall be treated with a flame retardant. So, if the material uh, required to be flame sp spread proof, when we say flame spread proof, the material will be not be affected by the flame directly or in time when it's subjected to that flame. No, it should have a uh, flame retardant so as i've discussed earlier flame retardant are the chemicals or the materials no that have been used so that the uh, material that you applied no with that uh, chemical will not react to fire easily of 50 or less as determined by the tunnel test no later on uh, i will watch uh, will uh, let you watch the tunnel test so this is the video of the tunnel Best. of the ASTM E84 Steiner Tunnel Chamber Standard Test Method for surface burning characteristics of building materials. SGS is proud to be home of the newest state-of-the-art Steiner Tunnel Chamber in North America. Prior to testing, the test item is cut to size and mounted appropriately to mimic actual installation. The specimen is then placed in a conditioning room with regulated temperature and humidity settings. Once a constant weight is reached, the specimen is ready to test. The test specimen, measuring 24 inches wide by 24 feet long, is placed horizontally on the test chamber's inner ledges, facing down. Specimens that are not required to be mounted to a substrate are laid upon wire mesh and steel rods for support. Once the test materials are secured properly, the test chamber is closed with a watertight seal. The test material is then subjected to extreme gas flame exposure from two natural gas burners, a three-inch opening near the end of the tunnel, as well as a regulated exhaust fan allows air to be drawn through the tunnel at a steady rate, ensuring that the igniting flames are able to spread naturally across the face of the test specimen. During the test, a technician continually records flame advancement through the tunnel's observation windows while the photometric instrumentation in the exhaust duct records the specimen smoke developed. The 10-minute ASTM E84 test establishes the specimen's flame spread index and smoke developed are reported. During the test, the technician notes the time at which the test material ignites. The maximum flame spread distance is recorded, as well as the time at which maximum distance was reached. This determines the flame spread index. Flame spread index and smoke developed are reported. Product classified accordingly. Any specimen that fails to meet these specifications is considered unrated. The test is concluded after a 10-minute flame exposure. SGS proudly invites you to witness this state-of-the-art test and view North America's newest ASTM E84 Steiner Tunnel Chamber at our Farmingdale, New York laboratory. And last, now standards for material used in structural framework, uh, exterior walls and openings, floors, exits, stairs, and roofs shall be governed by the pertinent provisions of the Fire Code of the Philippines. Of course, uh, we have separate code for that, and hopefully we could have discussed all of those things now with the relation to Fire Code. Of course, we will have a discussion with the Fire Code, but it will be in general. No, it will. We will not go deep down with the specifics, but. Uh, of course, we will having our um, discussions with that no, in relation to fire code and other codes related to the National Building Code of the Philippines. So, thank you for uh, watching this video lecture. And you, if you have questions, if you have concerns, please uh, you could comment no or have your questions in the comment box. Or if you don't 
uh, want to have that, or you could message me directly so that I could answer your questions and concerns. So thank you, and hopefully you l you've learned something. And see you on our next discussion with regards to the codes and regulation, specifically with the National Building Code of the Philippines.